Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by Titan FC welterweight Mike Bronzoulis. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show, Mike. Sure, no problem. Thanks for doing it. Mike, let's go back in time a little bit and work our way to the present day. you got a fight coming up August 22nd against Keith Johnson. We'll get to that fight in just a second, but let's get back to how we got to this point. Uh, let's start with Fight Master. You were on the Bellator reality show Fight Master. Obviously, the, the, the show didn't end the way you wanted to. Obviously, you wanted to win the show and become the Fight Master. You lost in the finals by decision to Joe Riggs. But besides that, overall, how was the experience? Uh, it was overall, um, overall a real good experience. I learned a lot from that show uh, about myself, uh, about others. And, uh, you know, just had a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was great overall, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, the show, kind of just a a new experience all around. Like, we were kind of just learning as we went along. You know, Bellator tried to put a different spin on an MMA reality show. We weren't really sure where the the actual show was going. Um, Were there any curveballs thrown at your way? You know, did you really know what you were getting uh, thrown into? Like, was what was told to you going on the show actually what played out? Or was there anything that you're like, oh, this is kind of new. This is a little bit different than they had said. You know, to be honest with you, we didn't know a whole lot mm. going into it. We just knew that we had to show up, and uh, we had to fight. And if you won, you went inside the house, and then everything would be explained to you. And so we were all kind of left in the dark. And uh, there was a lot of anxiety, a lot of nerves going on. You know, when we arrived there originally, they had us put in this hotel. And they don't tell you when you're going to come out. They don't tell you, you know, anything. They just tell you, be ready. And, uh, you know, I got mine at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Knock on my door. Tell me, they told me it was time to go. So 8 o'clock in the morning, I, I went and fought. Mm-hmm. How long were you in that house for? Or the gym, I uh, guess. You know, you know we, we, were, we were filming, I should say, uh, for about six weeks. Mm-hmm. Now, on the show, it airs every week, so we see the fights every week, but that's not how they happen in real time. Like, how much time do you have in between fights? Obviously, you made it to the finals, so you fought three times, uh, you know, on the show, and then once at the live finale, so four times in total. But what's the the timeline of in between your fights? Yeah, I mean, actually, it was four times before the final, uh, including the the fight to get inside the house. That was the first episode when I had the white shorts on, when I chose the Randy Couture as my coach. Uh, We had nine days in between each fight after that. So the next uh, eight days of training and or healing up, I should say, (laughs) you know, icing down, and uh, then you find the ninth day. Mm, I see, I see. Now, you picked Randy Couture as your coach. When the show ended, did you go out to Las Vegas and train with Extreme Couture? I did. When the show ended, you know, I, they invited me out to that camp, and everybody there was extremely welcoming and, uh, you know, took me in and treated me like their own, man. Uh, Randy was awesome to me. You know, I learned a lot from that man, and uh, it was overall an awesome experience again. You know, I had another remarkable experience out there, so mm-hmm. incredible. Was it ever a possibility that you would permanently move to Vegas and do all your training at Extreme Couture? Was like, was that something that was ever on the table after the show? Most definitely, you know. But a lot had to do with me winning, you know, the big grand prize and having the funds to do something right. like that to make a move. You know, uh, I'm pretty, you know, pretty rooted in over here, pretty well over here in Houston. You know, uh, my mom's here, and uh, that's a that's a big that's a big responsibility for me. You know. I'm she's gonna go and uh you know i need to be able to take care of my family and stuff so i, I couldn't just get up and leave you know i you need funds to do this uh, and fortunately you know it, it does take finances to chase dreams sometimes you know a lot more than just heart and desire you know uh it takes money sometimes mm-hmm. a few of these dreams right right but never say never it's still a possibility you would still be open to it if you could get the funds Man, any, yeah yeah anything's a possibility you know um you know, anything's a possibility, but right now I'm here in Houston, Texas, and I'm training with uh, Saul Solis, my original head coach, so I'm back over here right now. And this is where I'm going to be as of right now, and, uh, you know, my uh, my career's uh, got some uh, some pretty cool things going on in it, and, uh, you know, it's got to see how it works out. I can't plan ahead right now because I've learned when I've done that, you know, uh, 
things don't always go my way and then I don't know what to do. So it takes me a while to regroup and figure things out. So I'm trying to stay, you know, focused on just today. And uh, it's good to have ideas going on, you know, in your head, try to figure things out here and there later on. But uh, I'm going to take it one day at a time and just see what happens. You know, I have faith in, in my higher power of God, and he's, he set me on this path, and uh, we're going to see where it leads. You know, I'm just going to follow the, the path that he leads for me, though. Mm-hmm. You know? I see. I see. I see. Now, I'm just curious, what exactly happened with Bellator? You made it to the finals. You lost to Joe Riggs. A lot of people had assumed, since you did so well on the show, that they would keep you around. Was there something in the contract where they were only going to keep the winner? Was that something that was in place, or what exactly happened there? No, no, it's, that's not at all what happened. Okay. Uh, I was extremely upset after the fight. Mm-hmm. Joe Riggs and I flew home together side by side uh, with his corner on the left of me and my corner on the right of me and uh we were actually you know i could put my hand out could hold hands that's we were right next to each other mm-hmm. and uh we, we talked and he told me a lot of stuff that made me very very unhappy and uh when i got home you know i decided that i wanted out of my contract and i was really pissed off and you know for whatever reason i'm not going to go into detail about that but uh they let me out of my contract uh as long as i paid some you know, X amount of dollars, you know, and, uh, and then I was out, you know? Mm, I see. That's very interesting. I, uh, I didn't know that part. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, yeah, nobody knows. Nobody knows, you know, I've signed contracts. Con- I can't talk about certain stuff, you know? Right. Uh, you know, whatever, man. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is, man. Mm. I see, I see. Now, after the show, and after you got out of your Bellator contract, you had trouble finding fights. What exactly led to that? Was it just that you did so well on that show, no one wanted to fight you? Was it a money thing where promoters couldn't fly you certain places? What exactly happened? To be honest with you, I don't know. You know, I I spent a lot of time just looking for answers myself. I spent a lot of time... Um, tweeting Dana White and the UFC, asking them to give me a shot. You know, one week's notice, two days' notice. I didn't care. You know, uh, you know, and uh, just kind of sat in the dark for a while. You know, try to move up and wait. You know, things didn't go well. I mean, just anything, anything I could try to do to get fights. Uh, things weren't going my way. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, my manager Mickey Deberly, You know. Uh, reached out to Titan and you know they got me this deal man which I'm very grateful for Mm -hmm. is it fair to say that even when you were going through fight master you still were trying to continue on the path to getting to the UFC even though you were with Bellator you were still trying to make it to the UFC correct yeah I mean my whole plan going into the Bellator show because I from what I understand I had an option you know uh, I was I I was signed with strike force and uh, before the Bellator show and um my manager told me that they had offered me a fight on their last card, which was December, a couple years back. And if I won or lost, taking on short notice, they would have uh, given me a shot in the UFC. Um, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know if that was a good idea for me to do on t- taking a short notice fight. You know, I don't know. I thought about it for a little bit. Then I also had the Bellator option on my plate, and I, I thought to myself, maybe I can go win this Bellator reality show, make my name big, and then. You know, maybe I can get paid in the UFC. Maybe have a a bigger starting. You know, just try to raise my raise my stocks up a little bit. Is my plan. Well, I came up short, as uh, everyone knows. I came up a fight short, but uh, you know, still on that path. You know, my whole my whole game plan. If to answer your question, yeah, you know, when I was in the Bellator show, it was always about getting to the UFC. That's where that's where the best are. And uh, I mean, if, if you want to get paid, you know, shit, this isn't. It doesn't pay for itself, you know. If I don't fight, I'll make no money. Can't pay no, can't pay my bills, man. And uh, you know that's where all the money's at. So that's where you need to be if you want to make money and be the best. Mm-hmm. Right now, you're in the right place signing with Titan because they made it clear that they want to get guys into the UFC. But let's just say, you know, you fight a couple times for Titan, and you know the, the UFC still isn't calling you. Would you consider going on the Ultimate Fighter? You just did a reality show. Would you ever consider doing that one? You know, I would do whatever I got to do to get where I need to get. Um, If if the UFC doesn't take me after uh, after whatever after how many fights, and they still don't think that I'm worthy, then uh, maybe CBS will offer me a bigger contract. Mm. You know, I'm not I'm not about jumping ship or whatever. 
I'll stay with whatever company. I just want to get paid. And, uh, you know, I, I got some, I got some serious, serious, uh, plans right now. And, and I'm going to become world champion. You know, I'm, it doesn't matter what organization I'm going to go to. I, I've, I've been working on a lot of different things. And, uh, man, all I can say is uh, action is going to speak for themselves, you know, uh, come um, August 22nd. Mm -hmm. I can sit here and talk all the talk I want, tell you this, tell you that. It's, it's all in the wind, you know. The only thing that's going to be real is when that, when that bell rings that night. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will speak for itself. People can take me seriously if they want, or uh, they can go ahead and laugh me off like they did, like the guys did in the Fight Master show. And they thought I was all some Jersey Shore guy, you know, with my hair up and, mm -hmm. you know, tan skin. They weren't laughing at me at the very end. I guarantee you that. The very beginning they were, but uh, I sat there and took it. I listened to everybody make fun of me. And, uh, you know, it's okay. You know, it's what people do when they're scared or when they, when they see something different they don't understand. You know, they want to talk about it and, you know, make excuses and jokes and stuff to make themselves feel better and stuff. You know, it's whatever, man. You know, I don't listen to all that. I don't buy it all that, man. It's all about mental strength. And um, my mental game's on point, mm -hmm. and nobody can touch me up. Mm -hmm. So, do you still feel that you're being overlooked now? Uh, right now, uh, no. Uh, you know, I have some stuff to prove. You know, do I feel like I belong in the best organizations in the world? I do, and I don't. I mean that with the most sincerity. I'm not being cocky. I believe I can compete with the best guys in the world, if not beat them. I've sparred some of the best guys in the world, and, and you know, and I've done very well. I know it's different in the gym than it is in, you know, in real fights, but I believe, honestly, I mean, I've been fighting for the last six, seven years, anywhere that comes my way. You know, I believe I'm an exciting fighter. I believe I have a huge fan base. I, I think I've got a pretty big, uh, pretty huge fan base for not being in the UFC, you know, and uh, I'm known worldwide. Um, it's just a matter of time, you know. I just got to prove some things. I have to prove some things to the world, you know, and I understand that. You know, I'm not sitting here at being arrogant, thinking I deserve something that I haven't, or, you know, think I should get something I haven't do, don't deserve, you know. I have to prove myself again, you know. Uh, I think I would have deserved it if I would have beaten Joe Riggs, uh, you know. But I didn't, and uh, so back to the drawing board, and here we are, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, let's just say you had beaten Joe Riggs, and you still had that plane ride home with him, and you sat next to him, and you heard the stuff that you did here. Would that have changed anything, or would you still done what you did? If I had beaten him? If you had beaten him, but I, I still had, heard that stuff. Yeah, if I, if I, if I had beaten him, uh, you know, it's really hard to say, man. You know, there were some really, really, you know, messed up things that he told me that I just couldn't believe, and uh, come to find out they were true. And, uh, you, know, it's, you know, it just blows me away, man what people do in this sport, you know, and, uh, you know what, man, I'm, I want to send a message out to any MMA fighter out there, man. If you have a, a dream about being champion and being the best, don't trust anybody in this business. Um, look out for yourself and, uh, try to help people the best you can, you know, but, um, man, it's a very, 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 very dangerous game we play. Mm -hmm. Now you can't play MMA. But the game of MMA, I'm talking about the game, the politics, mm -hmm. managers, the fighters, you know, the organizations, every part of it, you know, is dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, just you're dealing with you're dealing with people's lives, dealing with people's dreams. You know, you're dealing with people that don't care about your dreams, don't care about this, don't care about that. They only care about this themselves. So you just have to protect yourself. And that's what that's my message to people: protect mm -hmm. yourself and watch your back. In this game is fucking shady. Mm -hmm. So what's tougher, the fights in the cage or the fights to get fights? Well, you know, you know, my coach always said the fights the easy part, and uh, it's true. You know, fighting is easy. All the shit you got to deal with leading up to the fight is the actual fight, whether it be the weight cut or, you know, the training or just the money issues, the sponsors. Um, if you have a girlfriend or a wife, I mean, you know, that could be stressful. Right. You know, um, mm -hmm. so, that, yeah, I mean, before the fight's always the hardest part for me. Mm -hmm. Now, you had a fight back in January. You lost that fight 
by TKO in the first round. What exactly went wrong for you in that fight? Was it just something where you had been on the shelf for a little while, you wanted to take a fight, and you just dove into one that you probably shouldn't have taken? Like, what went wrong for you on that one? Yeah, man. I mean, I was training for, you know, I fought at 170. I couldn't get any fights. And, uh, man, I, I mean, that was a short notice thing. They changed my opponent the last second, and I had to fight up in weight class, a weight class I'd never fought in before in order to get paid. I thought I'd beat the guy. And uh, it was just a bad decision, you know. I'd never fought at 185 before. I went into that fight like in my like 170 something, you know. The guy was close to 200, if not more. And uh, it was just really, really dumb move on my part. I'm not, you know, I'm too much pride to admit that, you know. I mm-hmm. shouldn't have done it. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't have done it, but I needed money. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Now you were supposed to fight your opponent for August 22nd. You were supposed to fight him back in April. Uh, for Titan. So I'm just curious, when does Titan come into the picture? When do they contact you and when do you sign with them? Well, I was supposed to fight for them um, right. a few months back. Right. Not exactly sure what happened or the exact date. Uh, I don't know if it was um, July 19th or June 19th. It was a couple months back, I believe. Maybe it was uh, maybe a little longer. But um, I'm not really sure what happened. You know, uh, I was expecting a fly out that week. And my manager told me that uh, my 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 fight had been canceled uh, a month ago or something like that. I just I was just getting word, you know, that week, and I was wasn't really sure what was going on, you know. To be honest with you, I was, I was pretty upset, you know. No one told me, and uh, I was you know, like I said, I was expecting to get paid, you know. Mm-hmm. Trying to fight and get paid, that's what I do. Mm-hmm. So as you can understand, I'd be upset. I don't really know what happened. No one explained anything to me. Mm-hmm. I see. Here I am. Here I am. They, they gave me a call, and well, actually, my manager gave me a call and said that you know they, they have a fight for me. So here we are. Mm-hmm. I'm really happy to have this fight too. Mm-hmm. Very grateful. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Now you're taking on Keith Johnson. What are your thoughts about him as an opponent? Man, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, just the obvious. You know, I know everything about him. His size, his record. Uh, seems like a tough guy. Mm-hmm. I really don't put too much energy into what my opponents are going to do or what I think about them, man. It doesn't matter to me. Hmm. I see. I see. Now, you're 35 years old, and, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of life, 35 years old is, is not that old, but in fighting, you know, a lot of people would say that is, you know, getting up there in age. Um, do you feel pressure to get something going? Do you feel the clock is ticking right now in your career? Do you feel that you have to make something happen fast? I mean, yes, I'm 35 years old. Do I feel the pressure? You bet I do. But that's only because you can't get into this. It's that much harder to get into these upper, you know, these higher uh, organizations at, at my age. You know, um, they want younger guys, and I understand. So you have to stand out. You know, do I feel old? Absolutely not. I feel better than I've ever felt my whole life. Uh, and I'm going to have to just show that, you know. So the only thing I can do is just show that. Um there's going to be pressure on you in every single aspect of your life. This is just one, another one of those moments. You know, I can deal with pressure, so uh, I'll be able to deal with this. It won't be that big of a deal. All i got to do is stay in shape, stay healthy, keep my mind right, and perform like I know I can, and uh, things will be fun. Mm-hmm. Weren't you supposed to have a fight a couple weeks ago? I can't remember exactly the name of the show or something. It was a local show. Weren't you supposed to fight? It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not even worth mentioning. Okay. Yeah, the, the, it's not even worth mentioning their name. Hey, I was supposed to have a fight um, uh, two Saturdays ago in uh, Galveston, Texas. But, uh, you know, I, I, caught the promoter, uh, I caught the promoter stealing money. Mm-hmm. And... You know, I warned everybody at the weigh-ins not to not to give them in ticket money because when you're fighting in your hometown, you uh, you you give ticket money, you sell tickets to your friends, family, right. people you know. And uh, I warned everybody that he was going to shut the show down the next day and run off of the money. And uh, I think one other fighter listened to me, and everybody else gave him the money. And then yeah, I got a call the next day, and they said that. He shut the show down, <laughs> and he did. He pocketed everybody's money except mine because I, I held on to it. I made a deal with the actual investor of the show, who was the real boss, not the promoter. And I told him that I caught him stealing, and he told me 
that he caught him stealing also, but he couldn't fire him because he had the bo- he had the boxing license, so he had to mm-hmm. go through with it. And I explained to him, okay, well then I'm not going to give him a penny of my money. I'll give it to you tomorrow once the doors open. I see everyone let inside, and the first fight starts. He thought that was totally fair, and he understood. So that's the deal we made. The next day, that that's what happened. Mm-hmm. The promoter shut it down and ran off people's money. And, this is a big mess, man, big nightmare. Mm-hmm. But I try to warn everybody, and I try to, you know, let people know, but some people got to learn the hard way. You know, I've done it myself, mm-hmm. actually, several times. I see. Learning the hard way, that is. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Now, you mentioned earlier that you want to be in big shows because that's where all the best guys are, but from the business side of things, you have to be in the big show because the big shows, they don't do stuff like this. Shows like the UFC and Titan, a bunch of the other big shows, you don't see stuff where, oh, they're, you know, they're collecting a bunch of money and then there's no show the next day. Like, you don't see all that kind of craziness at the top end of the, you know, the the sport. So is that another motivating factor to get into a big show so you don't have to deal with this kind of crap? Of course it is, you know. I mean, I mean, and, and, and besides, I feel like I'm a I'm a hell of an entertainer as well as a fighter, and I feel like I belong in a big show, a big stage. You know, I have a lot to offer. I bring a lot, a lot of presentation, and uh, yeah, I mean, I've been dealing with all that stuff, you know, coming up, you know, and so I, I, it kind of sucks when you have to take a couple steps back to get where you want to go. But I'm humble enough, and then I swallow my pride and do what I got to do sometimes, man. Just like everybody else would. Mm-hmm. Now, on August twenty second, is there anything you're looking to prove, and is there anything you're looking to showcase in this fight? Yeah, yeah, I want to. I want to prove that I'm the best. I want to prove that I'm a hell of an exciting fighter, and I want to prove that when I'm on TV fighting, you're gonna, your eyes are going to be glued to the TV. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see what happens that night. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Well, Mike, uh, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Yes, I do. Uh, thank you for asking. I want to thank Shamrock's Pub in Humble, Texas. I want to thank Aqua Hand Car Wash and Detail in Montrose, Texas, Houston, Texas. I want to thank State Farm Insurance, Wilbert Samuel uh, with uh, State Farm in uh, Houston, Texas. Saul Solis and all my teammates at Metro Fight Club. And um, and also, uh, yeah, I just want to thank all my friends, family, fans, for all the love and support over the years, and uh, you know, much love back. You know, I really appreciate it. You know, mm-hmm. we're not done though; we got more to do. Mm-hmm. Mike, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it, and best of luck coming up on August twenty second. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike.